Hello, and welcome to the Monster Hunter Podcast Show. It's episode 53, and it's Tuesday, August 23rd, 2011. This is Shepard from SocialDissonance.com, and I'm stepping in for hosting duties as Christian is currently being held hostage in Gamescom in Cologne, Germany. Ah, poor Christian. Hello, this is Noxella, also from SocialDissonance.com. Wait, who goes now? Oh, no. <laughs> you do, you big dummy! <laughs> my ba- I, I don't remember these things. Uh, my name is Nick, and my dongle don't waggle. <laughs> hey, everyone, this is Miserion. Uh, welcome back, Missourian. Um There has been a, a critical lack of skill on this uh, podcast. Um, we were using auto guard with uh, long swords, punishing draw with gun lances, and wide range plus two and adrenaline. And uh, only and with your guidance. Me. And that was all on Nick, actually, in one show. <laughs> oh wow, that's a good going, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Did you uh, wear purple thongs? Well, uh, well, in real life, I was. <laughs> Well, that would be why you're able to complete quests still. <laughs> is yeah. that what you wear? Is that what you wear when you're not wearing pants? You guys are just well, like I don't have video enabled in Skype. Oh. <laughs> uh, someone pay the five dollars to make video chat enabled. Yeah, I want to see. Uh, well, you can just send the money straight through a minute to my PayPal account. It's oh. R18 Miserion. Uh, okay, hold on. What do, what do I have in my PayPal account? Let's go see. So I'm just an, kidding. I'm not gonna. Oh, well, fine. Oh, hey, we began a quest. Oh, oh my god! Wow, sudden and exciting. Um, so yeah, I guess we're getting straight into it, and uh, this is just a challenge that was requested at one point uh, in Switch Axes in Monster Hunter Portable Third. They now have a file that seems to be able to do exhaust damage. And so the challenge is to try and knock a monster out with that file. And actually, I found it, and so, this guy is so tiny. He's so. We're killing a monster with fire. Uh, with a file. Oh, and with I fire. I'm really terrible. I cannot hit this thing with a paintball. No, we're going for blunt force trauma to the head. Oh, well, that works. Yeah, especially on the <laughs> cute ones. Oh, good job. Huh. You know, how come a thing as tiny as that is able to get, like, so much ice out of the ground? Density. It barely even has arms. He's stronger than you. He's stronger than you. Density. Wow, this, this is going to be really interesting for you to try and burst. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Oh, how did you... Oh, oh, what? What? oh, did you just disconnect? Everybody did. Uh, everyone... I still see everyone else moving around. Yeah. Oh. I guess I disconnected. I haven't gotten one KO effect off on this at all. Was this a terrible idea? <laughs> Whose idea was this? Uh, I'm getting them occasionally. Oh, I got one. <laughs> this is riveting. Seriously. Hey. So there's a rabbit, guys. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's there. I saw it. So tell us, uh, Nick, what have you been up to? We missed you last week. People want to know. Uh, I uh, am finishing up my Masters, and I'm working on... A couple different projects for some professors at other universities, uh, and so two tiny. My, <laughs> my my life has essentially been playing video games, listening to rap music from the Middle East, and reading comments on newspaper forums. <laughs> that, that's Why? pretty basically all Why I've would been you doing. Ever read comments on newspaper forums? Those are like the worst things I've ever done. Well, the w- interesting thing, okay, is that they have moderation policies, and the moderation policies say 
There will be no blatant racism, no blatant this, no blatant that. And so everybody's curious about what sort of racism and things still get through. Uh, and like moderation policies as a whole has kind of come under fire. There's a paper in Buffalo that said in order for you to co post comments on our news articles, you have to verify your identity by coming in here and actually like showing us who you are. Like a re like a wow real ID sort of system. <clears throat> yes, real ID. There we go. Nick, have we talked and about so, this on the podcast before where I was discussing that one Google Talks guy that was saying that the internet was going to die because of anonymity? Well, he said that uh, the internet was going to become less anonymous and that it needed to. Um, and I kind of agree with him in, to a certain extent. You've seen a lot of horror stories from Google Plus recently. No, but, I, haven't, uh, uh, and I haven't actually. So it's people that hide their online identity. Uh, say they're into like, what's that whips and chains sex thing that I can't remember the name of right uh, now? S and M. What? S and M. So like they're into S and M or they're into like transgender stuff or maybe they uh, cross dressing or something like that. And so they hide it online, but now they can't be part of any communities on Google Plus because they have to use the real name. So you're back to like maintaining your real life identity which so the internet stops being an escape and starts being you know the same prison that you were in before well I mean you've always got a choice not to use those services on the internet don't you I mean if you're fundamentally opposed to having to reveal your identity then you just sort of that's part of the password of using Google it's, uh, Plus isn't it it's a, it's a it's a tricky argument though because if you just say well don't use it then what reason does any company ever have to do to to actually give something to, or try and make a product that everybody can enjoy. <clears throat> Plus, it's tied to a Google account, and so your Gmail account is basically automatically signed up for it, um, and it can be pretty tricky. And they're actively banning people who don't adhere to their naming policies. Ooh. Yeah, I guess that's tough, but I mean, um, not like tough as in tough teddy, but like tough as in hard to deal with. But. Uh, maybe it'll help some of these people sort of be more open with these things. I mean, not everyone needs to come out of the closet, right? But yeah, maybe it's, it's not yeah. a bad thing. I, like I don't personally, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. But I mean, there are a lot of people that are kind of they're not really embarrassed, but they don't, they don't want to deal with all the problems and stigmas that come along with identifying as a certain thing. Like I mean, that I might be like difficult in certain workplaces, right? Yes, yeah, that's, I mean, especially if they're, like, school teachers and stuff, they'll start dealing with school boards and things. Why are you posting naked pictures of yourself clamped together <laughs> with your tongue <laughs> sewed to another tongue? It's Who not doesn't? really cool. What's wrong with that? Sound like you know a lot about this, Nick. Uh, well, I know a lot about deviant social groups, because it's all I've had to study for the past ten years. Let that free flag fly, man. <laughs> no problem. I'm about as I am as heteronormative white male as you could possibly be, but somehow I managed to get in to these uh, unique groups, and I, I still haven't quite figured out like what the deal is. So okay, anyway, that's boring, and uh, I, I thought it was, I mean I, well I mean the only thing that's sad is that we have yet to knock out this Urkusis. I think, I think it's part of its do, bad um, luck. I've I gotten some. Hits, man. Well, I just got a bunch in a row. <clears throat> I'm just worried he's gonna die first before we knock him out. We should get someone with like some a bowgun with some heal shots to keep him alive. Ooh, that, <laughs> that's why we keep you around, Maze. <laughs> How cruel would that be, man? <laughs> Perpetually so, keeping a monster alive to kill him later. <laughs> I just mean. So, Maze, what have you been up to since the last time that uh, you were on a podcast? Um, well, after saving that orphanage, um, the one that was on fire. Um, I guess just the sort of, you know, the usual stuff. So there was the there was a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, there was those weightlifting competitions. And I guess after that, it was just... I didn't know they had Nobel Prizes in weightlifting. That's crazy. Oh, no, no. Two separate things. <laughs> I don't think they should be. I, I know, right? I'm, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's... if you can lift the weight of the world, then you should be given a weightlifting Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, yeah. really... You know, people just think just because there's no intellect involved with lifting something heavy that you shouldn't get a price for it. You know, it's just despicable. Oh, man. You know, it's a shame that practical skills aren't valued. I think it needs to be mentioned on the podcast that you are actually a legitimate uh, heavyweight lifter. 
that you're not that is, that is actually not a joke. You're messing with everybody's immersion now, and that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I know that there are a bunch of guys mainly on game facts who are going to be like, vids or it didn't happen. So vids can just like, <laughs> We need pics of you lifting heavy stuff, Maze. Come on, man. <laughs> you guys just want pictures of me in like my gym singlet. Okay, <laughs> that can you're purple. Yeah, song, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, I have eight dollars in my PayPal account. We, that, you, I, 15 I, minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. This is great. Does I get 15 minutes of professional Missouri on weightlifting pro tips? Uh, yeah, why not? Can we, uh, if we, uh, burst his head, does that do, do status too? Yes. Um, let's find out. It does. <laughs> oh! All you're oh, doing oh, is bursting oh, oh, me! Come on! Oh, it does too! Um, if you saw the ending shot, um, you can actually see, like, the KO sparks coming off when you're hitting his head. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, definitely possible. Uh, probably easier on something with a slightly larger head than Mini Urkusis. But who wants to the easy road? Uh, no. uh, I like tiny heads. I don't think the size matters. <laughs> you already know That's all the story, about buddy. Us. I'm going to spread it. Spread this message, I've decided. I'm, I'm taking back size. Size doesn't matter. We're, we're reducing it, you know, just like the waistline of America, it's the length. Oh, wait, no, I... How does that go again? That's the uh, big drive of, like, uh, Michelle Obama is to make us uh, a little less fat. And there are people that get really angry about, about that plan. They're like, hey, I want to well, be... Especially fat. because she's running against Rick Perry, governor of the fattest state in the union. Oh man, can I incre- can I submit that picture of Michelle Bachman eating a, a foot dog? long? That was actually a, a long stick oh, of fried gosh. butter. Really? Yeah, yeah. They do wow. that. Please. They do. They eat fried butter. They they dip it. They dip it in coating and they deep fry it and then they eat it. Oh, this is like how, the coolest ending shot ever. How does that is really good? Wait, wait. I like that I'm on the ground. How do my you own? fry butter? Uh, Nick, Texas expert, you, any any tips? Uh, basically, you put a whole bunch of butter and batter in a thing, and so I think I don't know. But it's a it? bunch of batter. You take a uh, a big long stick of butter and you just dunk it in the batter, and hopefully, I guess it solidifies before it has a chance to melt. Ah. Okay, so that's the how. How about the why? <laughs> Uh, because it's Texas, and we celebrate our freedom by making ourselves so fat that we explode. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Texas, Deal with man, it, country. <laughs> you can't take our you can't take our obesity away from us, freaking government. You know, sometimes I feel like in New Zealand we miss out on a lot of the cool things the world has to offer, and then other times I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to eat fried butter? I don't know what's wrong with you. Hello, and welcome to Lesson 2 of Monster Hunter University. Today's topic is going to be on team speedrunning. This was inspired by a series of hunts run with Rar, Jur, and James of the Capcom Unity forums. There are several occasions in Monster Hunter where you may want to kill a great number of monsters very quickly. Perhaps you are looking for a gold crown, looking to get a title, or possibly the desire sensor has you fully in its grasp. While speedrunning a monster in the fashion I demonstrate isn't very challenging, it does allow for many monsters to be cleared in under three minutes. The basis of this tactic is to have one hunter immobilize a monster long enough so that it will be killed before it is able to escape the trap and status locks. Let's look at the gear that this necessary locker will need. First, you will need to create a bowgun. Put together the Chaos Wing stock, Thundercrust Rex Frame, and Gen Cannon Barrel. In total, you will have four Paralysis 2 shots, 
and three sleep two shots. Most wyverns need four shots for the first application of their status to be put to sleep or paralyzed. The armor should be the high rank Urigon armor with a plus 10 Trap Master Talisman. You should be able to gem in status attack up, which, while not reducing the amount of shots needed, gives you a little bit of flexibility before applying the last shot you'd normally use. The strategy I demonstrate can be varied slightly based on the monster, and if you have a person in the group using a hammer, but the general plan is as follows. First, apply the sleep status, and have everyone in the group lay bombs on the monster. While this damage is actually slightly inferior to straight up attacking the monster, it doesn't take long and gives everyone time to position themselves accordingly. Second, just as the bombs are being detonated, begin to lay a shock trap. With Trap Master, the timing works out such that you should be able to get it off before the monster screams. Third, while in the shock trap, begin applying the first round of paralysis. Every wyvern, except Uragon, needs four shots. Fourth, lay the pitfall trap almost immediately for all wyverns except Uragon and Diablos. Even with speed setup, a pitfall trap takes about eight seconds to activate, and paralysis only lasts ten seconds. Fifth, while in the pitfall trap, apply the second round of paralysis. Six, throw three trank bombs at the monster. With any luck, the monster will have been capped in the pitfall trap. Otherwise, combine a shock trap and use that for the last bit of damage for the final capture. Some last comments. KOs from hammers and weapon choice do matter. In my opinion, the sleeping portion of the strategy is only important to get the monster into position. Don't worry about bringing large barrel bomb plus if scatterfish are a problem for people on the team. Likewise, no bombs at all can be used if the group want to great sword the charge the monster anyways. I hope you found this guide helpful. There are certainly places to improve, such as incorporating stagger locks, wing clipping, or even flash bombing if desired. As a final note, remember that this is a lesson of last resort. Try hunting things without any traps or status shots for a real challenge. I'm not attached like my to it brother. Hi brother. Go home. No, I, Go home. I, oh no, I, am, I can't I buy am, potions. I am home. Go away. Oh, Go home. Oh, I can't buy potions because I already have potions. And I'll love you till you love me back. Love me! <laughs> love me! Oh, God. Put my, hand, put my hand on your shoulder. I'm gonna stroke oh, your hair. This is, getting, this is getting awkward. Your hair's so soft, Noxella. How you get it so smooth? You, uh, condition that? That's nice. What do you nice. do to your skin? Leave me alone. Your skin. Going here. Did I come back into the wrong Ooh. time? Oop. I, I think it's the right time. Nick's, Nick's here. Get, get back here. Where is he? 
Come over here, buddy. I'm right at the box. <clears throat> where, where, uh, where you going? Where you go? Ooh, ooh, hey. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> you work out? <laughs> no. You look like you work out. Well, you're lucky. I'd have to work out to look like that. <laughs> you do look like that. Maybe I don't think I've ever used the bio. Oh, come back here. Let me touch your hair a little bit more. There you go. No. Oh. There you go. Oh, that's you, Mace. I'm sorry. Whoa. Hey, bro. Oh, hey, whoa. Let's go out. Oh, what? <laughs> oh. All right. I guess we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, um, Maze, I have a question here. And sure. um, this is from Twiggy, the supermodel. And he wants to know, <laughs> oh. does... She, does she, oh, they. She, she. They. They. Does they. auto reload work on gun lances? Uh, if it's a serious question, no, it doesn't. Okay. It would be interesting if it did. Um, you know, it would be... I mean, obviously there's no auto-reload in Portable 3rd, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what would happen, what kind of shenanigans you could get up to with the uh, auto-guard talisman and auto-reload. Uh, that would be fascinating. I mean, I think auto-reload, that would probably work out best with uh, a normal gun, right? Uh, normal shots? Uh, uh, elemental shots are also amazing, no? but yeah. Oh, oh, now, oh now, we're, now we're crossing the divide. <laughs> Sorry, what? We're this merging... This we're, is getting, too much. we're getting we're getting meta maze, super meta. Wow, oh, that tail is a real pain to hit. Oh, this is gonna be really fun. Oh, okay, uh, and so this time um, we're we're gonna punish uh, ourselves even more. We're gonna try and cut the tail off this sand barrier off with only the uh, arrow attack. So you guys, wow, I crushed you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the bonus. <laughs> Do we know how many staggers it takes, maze? Uh. I'm gonna say two, and then it comes off after the second. Oh, are you guys using razor coatings as well? Uh, I, I, I thought the arrow. razor coatings didn't didn't have an effect on the arrow in portable third. I think they might have. Been I, uh, I was oh, okay. In two G, I'm uh, in, the, in unite. I thought that they increased your melee cutting damage. I think you're right. You're correct. And I think they just took it out for portable third though. So what do razor coatings do now? Uh, they increase the damage of close range shots, and they oh, prevent you from bouncing off of things that you would want to bounce off. They're like they uh, power co power coating light. They did that in uh, 2G2. To prevent you bouncing as well? Oh, uh, no, it's just damage boost to your close range shots. Guys, how many hits have you gotten off? <clears throat> no, Jeff. One. None. None. This is going to be painful. <laughs> you got one off hey, on hey. me. Have you, seen, <laughs> have you seen 300? You know the bit when um, uh, that queen is trying to win that senator's favor, and um, he's getting freaky with her, and then he says, this will not be over soon. You will not enjoy this. I'm reminded of that. <laughs> Wait, the guy from The Wire? The movie was really hard for me to watch, because I kept waiting for McNulty to just, like, get drunk and walk away. <laughs> oh, it's a bit sad. It's only going to rage run now. Well, yep. I think I've seen uh, speedruns where he's been killed faster than this. <laughs> Solo. <laughs> I believe it. Come on, Tail. Come on. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Someone's stunning. Stunning shade. <laughs> not hitting. What is going on here? We're Is all it tripping each other. for everybody else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. Oh, Keep God. it up. He's working with us. He's cooperating. Uh, yes. I, I the perfect moment. <laughs> I knocked him out. Oh, oh and we're actually... Oh, you did that? Oh, and look. Yeah. And now we're getting attacks off even faster because we're tripping each other. Well, that's pro style. That's how oh, good cool guys are all. Yeah. Here we go. I knocked him out by myself. Good job. That's how long he stood there. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he stand there so long? I'm gonna knock I him out again. Him. I flashed He's just tired. Oh, I'm done with this guy. I, I stunned him by hitting him. Somewhere a speed runner is raging because they wish that they had that sort of AI for one of their runs. Yeah, right. Okay. You know, I wish that this was a hammer. Just this yeah! yeah. Oh, That's really fast! Holy cow. <laughs> Wait, you were just saying this is the slowest speed run ever. Well, it's a really fast run for getting the tail off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so fast. 
god, that was the slowest, fast thing I've ever seen. And he's exhausted. Okay. Look, nobody ever said we had to be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best, worst thing I have ever had. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. now we commence the second part of the challenge where we try to KO the monster with the siege attack. <laughs> oh, that's another good idea. Yeah, let's do that. How do you KO something with the siege? Oh, with the arrow rain. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> then let's uh, let's get right on that. It should be about halfway to another let's KO. Let's put a, a question in right here. If the Monster Hunter podcast crew turned into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which turtle would each member of the crew be? And this I already answered this Papa question. Over. Yeah, but let's ask it on I, the... Yes. I think... I think, uh... Well, I think I would be Raphael. I concur with that. Um, I'm getting a Leonardo vibe off uh, Shepard. I was uh, thinking part Leonardo, part Donatello. Yeah, I think I, I, I'm, I'm not good enough to be Leonardo. Like, I gotta be at least part uh, Donatello. I mean, yeah, he, he gets a bow staff. He doesn't even get a bladed weapon. Like, they don't trust him with sharp objects. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Christian is I full just, on Angelo. I just run around murdering people, and everyone tries to cover up after me. <laughs> oh, wait, that's the comic books. <laughs> you know, I like the, the, Are you talking about the black and white comic books? Yeah, those were good. I, I read those as a kid, man. But they blew my mind. Like, like Damn. you grow up on the Saturday morning cartoon and you start watching, like, serious, like, chainsaws being used on, like, foot soldiers. Oh, God. Freaking out? What the hell? I'm a little kid. I don't yeah. need to see the like, uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtles, like, really murdering people and being, like, people being racist to them and stuff like that because the turtles are <laughs> not just people. Racist against turtles. I guess that's more... Yeah, it's, it's like literally racist as opposed to the racism we have now. <laughs> yeah, is, that, racism. is that a correct... Wouldn't it be specious rather than racist? Specious? I, I, I say that's maybe... Well, uh, we use racist species in this thing, in this world of incorrectness. What, uh, what animal in the animal kingdom do you think is the most racist? Zebra. Zebra. What? I, I think they're the most... They're the most accepting. Hey, have you guys read Guns, Germs, and Steel, <laughs> by the way? No. No? no wait, really? Why wouldn't you say yes? That book is amazing. I've read it then. Oh. He's a loser. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> you nerd. <laughs> you big nerd maze. How does it feel to be a big nerd? Oh, wow. Okay. That was... What's that? Eight and a half minutes. That was surprisingly fast for a joke run. <laughs> Not bad. There's all these normal threes. All these normal threes. People in <laughs> Europe grew up around more types of animals. They had more types of immunities to diseases. And uh, also, there were horses there that weren't zebras. Because <laughs> zebras are tameable. And so and we had all these horses run around everywhere. Yeah, and zebras who, I guess, hate people that aren't white, uh, wouldn't let the people ride. I bet if you tried anyway. really hard, you could, you could tame a, a zebra and ride it. You can't. People tried. The African tribes tried for centuries to try and uh, get make it so that they could ride them. So, I mean, really, Maze was correct. Zebras kind of are racist. Maze, how did you know that? <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, we used to have a big population of zebras in New Zealand, actually, but um, we just we couldn't stand that racist attitude, so we had to get rid of them all. It was about the same time that we killed all the dodos. <laughs> were, were they also racist, or did were you racist against them? No, nah, they're just kind of weird. <laughs> you know, they're kind of okay. like creepy with the big eyes and stuff, and we thought we've got enough flightless birds on this island already. You know, we've got the kiwis and everything else. Let's just let's just have <laughs> fun. He danced a psychedelic groove in the spotlight. Waka Waka became a phenomenon. Then it became huge. It came out of nowhere, and it came up really fast. Man, he gets a full dose of the hunter's life, that's for sure. Cha Cha was supposed to be the next best thing. Instead, he ended up being a cautionary tale of hunting excess. I always thought something would happen to Cha-Cha. I never thought he'd live to be ten, 
because he was just so wild. There was no derailing him on his path to destruction. Moga Village was run by Cha Cha, who pushed his life to the very limits. He is bigger than life! He was just a very intense person. He wanted to live every moment to the complete fullest. No one really knew what he was going to do next. But Cha Cha's wild life generated into a heartbreaking cycle of meat abuse. Rations turned into cooking steak, turned into eating pink liver, to trading for ethnic liver meat. I saw it happen with him. It became a habit. A habit he couldn't live without. Ultimately, that habit would claim Cha Cha's life. They found him there in his bunk in the village. I kept saying that was a mistake. It can't be him. Destroyed our family. I'll never be the same. Now the devastating account of the rise and fall of a hero, told through the intimate dances he left behind. Got a message from my minion. He said he loved me. I just want to say, minion, I love you too. Cha-Cha, the story behind the hunt. There, there are parents, Maze, honestly that contact me and tell me they watch this with their children. Wow. Like they no sit down sure. at the yeah, they sit down around the TV or the computer screen or whatever and they watch the podcast. It's not and... it's not their child. It's a child they picked up somewhere. <laughs> Red Drifter. <laughs> Drifter families watching the Monster Hunter Pod. So for this class have X's other names. Um Maze has made us all select each other's weapons. Um, I requested that Noxella use the Gunlance. Check this thing out. Check out this greatsword. It's a big. I've never. Big sword. I've. I haven't used the greatsword in pretty much any game. You ever. look like a hedgehog. Yeah. yeah What's going on, I Sonic? Do. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna go be 3D. Uh, <laughs> right. Ooh. guys, I got a Z axis. Let's not use it. <laughs> all right. Well, in any case, uh. These were all, uh, we were all required to select our, our weapon classes without having any idea of what the quest would be, other than whatever Missourian, uh had schemed up. And the, and the quest is actually a, what, HR9 Black Diabolus? Oh, yeah. All right, let's start it up. All right, I'm going to tell, tell this again, because as part of the conspiracy, this rant that I just said was already cut out. Okay, guys, I am actually a really funny guy. I mean, you might not have gotten that impression from the last podcast that I did, where all you could hear was a series of inane jokes. All the funny ones I told and all the amusing anecdotes actually got edited out of the podcast, right? So just I just wanted to say that and check that out there. You know, it, much it, like it, most of my skills, um, all of my funny jokes have been taken from Azuria. <laughs> true oh Wait, hey speaking which we have, we, oh i don't know why it's taking so long we're, it's, we're probably going to disconnect anyways we have a question maze and it's from sarah palin and <laughs> she asks just That's what funny. is australia's problem anyways oh. zirion has broken off from the group <laughs> <laughs> i know it's, it's like a troll question right but <clears throat> I would not put it past her to say something like that. What you know, like if, if New Zealand stopped accepting imports of, I don't know, beef or whatever from the US, she might say something like that. <clears throat> she definitely would. I mean, she's, uh, she's scary. She's getting popular. I should edit this out. I don't want to be too partisan. <laughs> Noxilla! Noxilla, oh, Brian, what did you do this time? <laughs> and, uh, I didn't do anything. Did you forget to Noxilla. plug the charger in? No, it's charged in. Did you turn on your PSP? Did you turn it off again what? and on again? There's an on button? There's an off button? No. Hey, Mace, we're cool using sonic bombs, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know what's on it. I mean, we're just not going to flash him because I mean, we're not into, we're not into dancing. Not, are, are we going to go back and try and get an XL again? Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, we we, we can just do this one. I mean, only because, I mean, this is like the second time we did it. Naxella, do you have... Uh, is Naxella recording video? No. Aw, oh, that's too bad. Be like, meanwhile... <laughs> <laughs> he was doing that one, uh, Urkusis' quest the entire time. 
Yeah. Maze, so is it? Am I bouncing with blue sharpness? Where are you hitting it? The uh, back. Then yes, you will be. Oh come on! Where should I be <laughs> aiming when he's when he's stuck in the ground or sh she's stuck in the ground? Just... Wind. I'm too short. I can't hit anything. <laughs> circle, circle, circle. I've got evasion of this. Yeah, let's do that. I forgot. I don't have any G armor, so my life is gonna be dangerous. What? <laughs> Where did you get <laughs> paralyzed? <laughs> that thing came from like off camera in a different. <laughs> Gotta love the gene fray. Telepathic paralysis. So you were not happy that uh, we selected the hunting horn for your maze. Why is that? Uh, I'm. I'm just not very good with it, to be honest. With you. I mean, I don't like the way it it feels, and I don't like the sort of the very limited range of attacks I have. Like, I, all, your basic option is to spam uh, super pounds, and then just use the triangle attacks when it's knocked out or otherwise occupied. It just, it just kind of feels like there's not a lot of depth to the class, especially because the buffs that you can give people are massively outstripped by what a light bow gun can do. So just, <laughs> what, what sort of damage you would be doing otherwise? Yeah, exactly, and it's like. You know, I don't know. Giving everyone else like marathon runner is is nice, but paralyzing the creature is better. Always. Although the uh, attack boost is pretty nice, though, right? Uh, it doesn't last very long. It doesn't last long enough to make it worth it. And it's better in multi, but in single player, it's a bit dire. Oh yeah. You know, and actually, I gave that um, advice to somebody. They were asking about Freedom Unite, about using the the hunting horn in solo play, and I'm like, it's really just not worth it. I mean, and of course, that's completely different in Portable 3rd. Portable 3rd, it's perfectly viable to solo with. In fact, there are some bow guns I believe they created with the full intention of people just using it as a solo weapon. Like, the yeah. uh, the, the Baryoth uh, hunting horn is fine to solo with, because you don't even need uh, to, to play the attacks on it. It doesn't have an attack on it. Nick, we're so sad. <laughs> Why are we oh, so yeah, sad? We are. We're... Because we weren't prepared for this magnitude of uh, challenge. <laughs> Even May seems a little sad. Well, oh, hopefully, right. I'll get a trip off or something. Man, well, you you're know, tripping. At the very least, it seems like the uh, Diablos goes into rage mode uh, slightly less than in Portable Third. <laughs> We're actually able to get off one combo without it freaking out on us. Give it time. As it gets lower on health, it's going to go into rage mode every hit. Yeah, that, that's actually it's. You got that to look forward to, right? Sorry? Isn't that its yeah. tell for, be, for being captured? Just one point of damage will yep. turn to rage mode? Okay. Actually, that's kind of a uh, interesting thing to discuss a little bit on this. Uh, just off the top of our heads, what are the uh, tells for monsters that they need to be captured? And let's talk about the ones that are subtle. The ones that, you know, you don't see it limping. Um, well, you know, P Plesioth loses its one thing. Oh, wait. That's not its fin goes down on the back. Yeah, Nick goes yeah. down. Nick was trying to be like ironic and like we were actually being serious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> it's okay, man. I, I live a life of lies. Now, something that I'm not ever any good at is noticing when the crabs are spewing yeah. out little uh, bubbles. Uh, foamy bubbles. I never really noticed that, but people say it's true. It is true. It's um, true. They've, yeah, the, the bubbles are definitely sort of blackish purple, and they are hard to see. Yep. Considering they're blackish purple crabs? Yeah, especially <laughs> yeah. on um, Cherisintor and Purple Hermitor. Oh, I actually picked a good weapon to use on this guy. Look at me. Accidentally smart. It's like a story <laughs> of my life right but here. You didn't pick a good weapon. Someone else picked a good Oh, that's oh. true. Oh. <laughs> well, I had to pick the weapon. I didn't pick the weapon. Class. Yeah, if you could just you do know. a ton of um, draw slashes onto the tail, that's actually a pretty decent strategy for Diablos. What? Diablos doesn't have a tail. <laughs> what do you call that thing? Oh, Nick, how dare you. This is a PG-13 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, That's a female. Oh, is this, is this one of... Is this a bro. member from your Google Groups, Nick? Is this a Google what Groups, Diablos? Alright, so back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're, they're basically attracted to women but they feel as though they are a woman. And so they get into, you know, that yeah, type of relationship. Things don't have to be... that's what they mean, want. Those two feelings are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. 
as uh, as they don't necessarily have to be. Oh, come on. I'm just going to stand here and get beat. That's my weapon. Oh, it's okay. working well for you. It yeah. worked out. Uh, Maxell, do you want to find any more questions to ask after that form spring? As Nick is dying, <laughs> I'm <laughs> Okie dokie. Here's a question from Anonymous. Uh, in... Hey, in... hey, thanks, Anonymous, for bringing down Bart yesterday. Oh. Ooh. It's true. Ooh. What's Bart? We don't, we, don't, we don't need them to be attacking attacking socialdissonance.com, guys. So, okay. I used Word They can Francisco? get in at 10 seconds. Was it San Francisco? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, it's the Public Transit Authority, um, and they were worried about protests and riots that were happening. And so they shut down cell phone service reception within their stations. And so Anonymous attacked them. Dang. Brought down sure. their website. Uh, put up a bunch of uh, what, dogma, I guess, from Anonymous. Isn't it, isn't it for- funny how they would protest a site being taken down by taking the site down? Doesn't that seem a little off, anyone? No. <laughs> I mean, what do you do when your nation is on fire? You set the nation on fire. Yeah, it's Take like that what you nation. do. It's like what you do when you pro- when you want to protest that there are no jobs and no one's hiring. You burn down businesses. Yep. Shot England. <laughs> uh, or like when you're, you know, protesting abortions. What do you do? You kill doctors. Yep. Wait, that might be not. Is it a shakalaka? Uh, I saw yes. it. This is so this is how, the episode when the Monster Hunter podcast grows up. I'm sorry, Noxel. Please go ahead. How, how about that question? Yeah, let's go to that. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? So, in Portable Third, there's a skill that can get breaks and tail cuts faster than normally would happen. Does uh-huh. that skill also affect uh, the damage you deal with items such as bombs, boomerangs, stones, etc.? What I understand Ooh. is that um stones and that have a fixed damage which is absolutely minimal right so i mean a stone's damage is always going to be one um boomerangs are a bit different but what i understand the skill uh ruiner does is uh doubles the damage that you do to a part before it breaks um i've heard conflicting reports that it lowers the stagger limit instead um and i'm not sure which one of those is true although sort of what? Certain... where is it going oh, no. he's just he's, he's like, i've had enough guys i'm out of here i don't need this aggravation Um, you know, I mean, it's it's not out of question to just say that it's an armor skill, and for the most part, armor skills, unless explicitly said otherwise, although it is in Japanese, so it doesn't do us any good, um, only affect the weapon. And so I guess I, I, I agree 100% with Maze. I mean, I, I, the only thing that, that would be interesting to test would be the boomerang thing. I mean, and that would be the way to know, because that does do more than, um, I think it does, what, five cutting damage? Ten Something cutting like damage? That. So you, you would see... Is it eight? Ooh. Yes. If so, if that were, it would do ten cutting damage if it were a one point two five boost, right? Which I'm going to guess that it does something like that. Does that seem reasonable? I mean, I'm completely making that up. Uh, it's uh, it, you break things twice as fast, so it's either giving you double damage or halving the stagger limits. I think. Oh, okay. I I, it makes more sense to do. Maybe it just doubles the stagger damage you do. Whoa! You just blew my mind. That's what the sound was. That pop. That pop. His next, next mind. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Did someone just flash bomb his backside? <laughs> Let's pretend I didn't hit the circle button on it. Okay. And I actually meant to do that, and was probably <laughs> dumb. <laughs> you got this vest void really good. Uh, yeah, I did. Take that. I'm not man. prepared for that. Oh, I, I want to hit something. The tail, maybe. Nope, nope, not allowed. How do people play with this weapon? This weapon is awful. <laughs> you don't play with a great sword, Nick. You live with it. You feel the great sword flowing. Uh, yeah, I have to live with it. It's like I'm a slave and wake up every day wishing that I was doing something else. You know, my brother free. makes the great sword. He would be very <laughs> sad right now to hear you say this. That would disappoint him. Good! <laughs> Maybe it'll wake him up from his tor- torment as a slave laborer. He's actually a, a semi-professional Left 4 Dead 2 player now. I saw him play in a tournament the other day. He won. Wow. Did I? 
I How do you have it. a tournament in that game? Uh, so you run through the what's the box? Uh, they have um, advanced point system. mods to it now, yeah, where there's there's different points awarded for how much permanent life you have at the end of a mission and stuff like that. You haven't used your pills, things like that. Right. Which actually, I mean, you know, it'd be not... What, what the hell? That actually sounded just like Coach. Who, who did that? So that's Coach. Oh, that's good. Thank you. You should hear my Shepard impression. Whoa, I want to hear it. <laughs> Have you been working on? No, I don't get in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be the moment. It's gonna be the moment. Yeah, I got off a of triple speed charge. How did it feel, bro? Did it feel good? It felt kind of crappy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, I really wish somebody had suggested that one of us brought a bow gun. Was too bad. Too shot, or? That's too easy. That would be really easy. Shepard's gonna die again. No, I'm not. He's got full life. Shepard died like four times this quest. But we keep editing it out. <laughs> you know, even. That's what people don't I, know. That's what just, people don't know. You, how often Shepard really dies. <laughs> just to keep my credit alive, even if I'm editing out some like boring part, I edit in my death very quickly just to prove that I died at that moment. Such as episode 51's. Um, quick shepherd death montage when I was uh, fast forwarding through the Elytron fight. You know, I find it interesting that when I'm playing, um, like when I'm not sort of going for a speedrun or recording myself playing and I'm just sort of mucking around, I die more often in Portable Third than I do in Unite. That is bizarre. I just I think yeah, it's, I it's because here, like, you, mistakes are punished so hard, you need to have your game face on all the time, right? Whereas you can sort of, in Portable Third, Attacks don't do a lot of damage, so you can sort of, you can get down to half health, not really care, not really heal up, and then get like, um, take one big hit or a series of combos, and then die out of nowhere. Can I, how do I gem in that game face armor seal? Because I could kind of use that. I, I bet you can tell I'm playing Portable 3 too much, because I'm just being careless. I'm like, whatever, it's going to die anyway. Respect yeah, the like Diablos. That. I can't respect Diablos. He's ready to be captured. Yeah, you should probably do that. I don't. Uh, I didn't bring anything to capture with. <laughs> I, I had a trap, but it's. I have a. Uh, I had a trap, but I ate it. Oh. 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 Oh, well. oh total reward zero. <laughs> who did that? Who? Who killed? Who died so much? Oh, that was me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh, bro. Uh, so how about those arena quests? There's <laughs> no way I'm doing that again. <laughs> uh, that that was the the challenge that challenged us too hard. But G rank's hard, bro. Wise teachings, according to K. O. Han. It began like any other Devil Joe hunt in the arena. We were itching for a good quest and a stylish pair of black leather pants. So the four of us decided to take on the rage match. However, things didn't work out as we had planned. And just as we slowly began to fear, the damage we did wasn't enough to fell the first Joe and the second one emerged. As if nothing could get worse, both Joes simultaneously pinned the four of us, and they began to quickly devour the last of our health. In the last moments of our lives, a figure raced through the atmosphere and crashed into both Joes. The monsters remained persevering in their attempt to swallow the last bit of our flesh, but then he acted. He removed his helm and quickly began to devour the Devil Joes, hammerful by hammerful. In a matter of seconds, the two bodies were not but a pile of Devil Joe gems. And as quickly as he had appeared, he was nowhere to be found. The heavy bang is what I'm going to use. Beg your pardon? 
The heavy bang. Stop banging things. The, uh, I bang. I'm like Ricky Martin. I bang. She bang. She bang. <laughs> oh baby, yes yeah, she move. She move. I mean, I don't know the words. <laughs> Guys, you're gonna love my. But now I need to go get eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism. Yeah, and now I just got sued, Maze. Thanks. Well, Copyright infringement. Mm. Copyright. YouTube. <clears throat> they picked it up. That's my bad, bro. Okay. <laughs> YouTube. All you need to say is one word. Like <clears throat> I would really like a rank above G rank. Y only you like, are asking for that, Maze. You and like ten other people. H rank. Ah, uh, see, uh, I would if I had the time to like play. The... Wait, you mean a level above Super Saiyan? <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> but you know, like a rank where every attack is a one-hit kill. Um, you know, flash bombs don't work and the points don't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just something, just something that's like super insane. So if you're walking around on ad hoc party with gear from that rank, right, then people know you're badass. Right, or or that you just <laughs> hack. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, this. Axella, I cannot connect to your quest, bro. <clears throat> Can no. I post it instead? Uh, okay. I posted it, but I'm apparently not online according to the room. Uh oh. And I'm that's gonna... when things went bad. I'm gonna exit out and see if I can come back in. But isn't it your room? Yep. Oh, I mean, sorry, exit out of the guild and come back in. Let's try this again. You're probably hardwired to try and go into the offline mode. No, it's definitely an online. Ooh. Ooh, oh wow, I used up a lot of resources that last quest. But it was worth it for the result. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> Alright, I'm no. gonna, I'm just gonna I'm sorry guys, I need to leave the room and come back and see if that helps. So I'm gonna kick you all out, but it's nothing good. Okay, uh well then actually how about somebody else should make the ad hoc party room. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, and doesn't... Anyway. Actually, no, we should have Noxella make it, because he's got to run up and down the stairs a bunch anyways. Okie dokie, up I go. I'm gonna go upstairs, or over to my living room. Alright. So do you think we're gonna include that um, Black Boss run? Yeah, I mean, I'm I not gonna edit it all out. I mean, people at least have to see Nick and I die a whole bunch of times, so they're not completely <laughs> confused. I mean, like, I mean, as you know, like, you don't, you don't include everything in verbatim. I mean, we had a long discussion about transsexual lesbian relationships. I mean, um, that's not going in. Oh, that'll go in. Okay. Um, but that might, it might be edited out. Or that <laughs> might also be into hunt, uh, you know, the uh, Monster Hunter late night, possibly. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not, I mean, sometimes I told the line a little. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong. I mean, people should be aware of, of transsexual lesbian relationships. Especially if they're pigs. What? <laughs> Do not want. <laughs> not uh, not so sure. Good. Not <laughs> sure if want. Do not. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but don't fight on the internet. I explain. What does that mean? Don't don't fight on the internet. Just you know, leave it go. Yes. Step away. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> But the, the internet was created to be an arena. I don't think you understand. <laughs> you, no, you don't get it. There is someone you don't get wrong it, bro. on the internet. <laughs> they're wrong. They need to be reminded that they're wrong. How about a question? In just a moment, once once we start. It's take what we could do hour. is um, we could get like post the feed live, and then uh, Alex could narrate it. Oh, that's true. But Right, so there's now like, there's, there's such a lag though. It's it takes like there's like a ten second delay. No, I mean you just it's being recorded, so we could just put it up there, and he has to say things like, <laughs> "Well, that oh no, look out!" Like a storybook. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Yes. Okay, now he's shooting. Be like it. Now he's David shooting more. Okay, and, and then he just hit him. Yep. So he's hitting just the like David Attenborough. The shepherd. <laughs> the shepherd. The right. <laughs> What he doesn't have <laughs> guts, he makes up for in brains, and he doesn't have much of theirs either. <laughs> the, the wild shepherd is a clever creature. At night, during the day, he cannot see but one <laughs> inch in front of him. 
Splat and moist. Splat and moist. It needs to stay in a hot water <laughs> cupboard, otherwise the scales become desiccated. <laughs> or where David Attenborough becomes cheeky. <laughs> okay. Alright, alright, that's enough David Attenborough. Just look what he's doing up. to that cuckoo's anus. <laughs> what? Crikey, look at the size of him! <laughs> he's got himself kid. all the way up in there, he's a big boy! What? <laughs> wow! What's David Attenborough stuff have you watched? <laughs> David Attenborough late night, man. Oh, whoa, hey, this, this is a tall grass. Uh, okay, so, Nuxel, you had a question for us? <laughs> okay, so this is from one of the people on Formspring. He asked, out of the whole Monster Hunter franchise, which monster do you think is the smartest and why? I think him. it's, uh, th- yeah, we're fighting him right now. <laughs> I mean, jerk, face, McGee. Oh. <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> uh, uh, I like jerk, face. I mean, Yangaruga, I think, is definitely the smartest monster. Uh, uh, don't look now, guys. The second one's right there. It's cool. Just ignore him. Just pretend he's not there. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, Jurassic it Park. Oh, it hurts me so bad. Well, really... As a David Attenborough fan, what I want to see is these two creatures making, you know, being these two creatures being made, you know, from uh, conception to birth. I want to see the moment they were conceived when uh, uh, <laughs> when the Kutku mounted the Rathian. And oh no! <laughs> Where did the purple <laughs> coloring come in from? Oh yeah. Well, if you combine purple and or orange and green, then obviously, uh, Ooh. you know, orange green kind of makes some sort of shade of something. I'm not sure if it's purple. I Probably think it would be brown. Colored. Uh, brown is usually. Um, but in any case, the uh, if the Yangaruga doesn't see you and you attack him, he will run away immediately. <clears throat> he'll also follow you between zones. Oh, he'll chase you. Yep. No, no not like. I mean, you know how the gyps are off sometimes we'll do that. Now, if you go to his own, which is in his normal flight pattern, and you, like, heal or sharpen, sometimes he'll actually chase you there. Well, I did not notice that. Uh, he so also wait, if I put down up? a large barrel bomb plus, what happens? Oh, he doesn't recognize me. Does he He's stand like, way back and, like, shoot it with fire? Sometimes he will, but it's not deliberate. Yen Shoruga. Oh, oh wait, is the other Garuga still here? Oh yeah. He never left. He's we just been tro- <laughs> Oh, he just got that one Garuga really well. That's funny. He got a right in the head with like two um, consecutive fireballs. Yeah. I mean, I also like how many breaks he has too. He's not. Oh, he's Did he fall just- asleep? Oh, that was that probably was him falling asleep actually. You did that. I did that. That was me. Oh man, I'm gonna die. Do you need a heal? Uh, <laughs> I do now. <laughs> getting a little oh! getting Michael Bay action. Yeah, so this is actually um, <laughs> the monster that almost prevented me from playing Monster Hunter. Uh, I mean, Maze, you in your Let's Play Monster Hunter Freedom 1, um, you have recently, not even recently, I mean, I guess it was about a month and a half ago, you conquered him. Um, rather easily, I'd say. I was disappointed. Um, I think I had most, my nostalgia goggles on, but I um, would always remember how like insane it was. But yeah, I, don't, I guess things change over time. You know, some things that you used to find really difficult quite often, you go back and you face them, and it's not as challenging. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you have a hammer, pound in the face. Uh, it was interesting seeing a hammer being used back when you didn't get the little KO flashes. Oh, absolutely. And it was weird, like, um, I did some quests to, before the Let's Play to warm up, um, and I was doing a, a Rathlos quest, and I didn't KO it the whole time, and I was like, what, what is wrong with this quest? You know, why am I not getting this guy? And it was just because he couldn't. And that was a very odd realization. Seriously? Is the other one going to fireball me again? What do you mean you can't KO the Rathlos? He just could not be KO'd? Huh? In the first game, Hammers didn't do KO damage. Yeah. Oh we right. Yeah. Run. They just but, uh, but they do more trips though, right? Is that, is that in, how yeah? In the, a lot more easily. Yeah. In the first game, you could run it. You could yeah. You could reliably knock them over. It's nice. It's nice. We like. It's nice. It's bad game. 
I'm so, so scared. I still have. I'm so scared right now. I still have a copy of the. Oh god. Sorry, guys. I've run out of like. No! <laughs> I, I was busy being windy. I should have just ran out of the area. Uh, but uh, I still have my copy of the Japanese Monster Hunter One, and so my intent is after I finish my thesis is to actually like go and see if that urban legend is true. Which urban legend? Uh, that you could cut off monsters' heads, particularly Rathian and Rathalos. You definitely can't. Have you have you played Monster Hunter One? No, I haven't. But that's the kind of thing that you would hear about if it was true, or you'd see videos of. They see the problem with this is that uh, all of the videos for most video games were taken off of YouTube for a long time. Really? So any of the videos of, of it, because I remember seeing videos of it, uh, have been taken down. There was you remember like, seeing a Rathalos head cut off. It was a Rathian head, actually. Okay, but I mean, and it was no. supposedly just those two, <laughs> and it was only in the Japanese one. Because in the, in the Japanese one too, if you cut a jaggy, you cut it in two, which is kind of interesting. Oh, you can still do that. Yeah. That's still possible uh, if you're using a great sword. I'm not sure if it works for other weapons. It's just if you do, um, if you kill them while they're in midair, um, they, yeah. they sort of they, they they look like they're splitting in half and they vanish in midair. Okay. Do we have bombs or something to exploit this sleep? I I do. Okay. But I can't oh. get out. Her, you know, so. I was going to bring uh, bombs, and uh, I didn't because of, I'm like, there's no way we're actually going to sleep off on this. <laughs> there we go. I got him. I, I couldn't escape the tail. It is a tale of two garugas. I mean, I'm eagerly yeah. awaiting this, Nick. I mean, and actually, it'll be cool because you'll actually like kind of have to force yourself to use a greatsword in order to get yeah, that head that's... up. Like, once I get used to it, I think... Yeah, and it was only when they were staggered, uh, or when they were ready for capture. Um, oh, sorry, like the that. other one's back. Yeah. The very next day... He's on low health, though. But uh, in the original Monster Hunter uh, guide, which was done off of the Japanese game, um, that you could cut monsters off. Cut, cut monsters' heads off was in there. I will... Um, Happily apologize if I say that and I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I would li like to say that as I'm to say. Yeah. No. 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 It's. I mean, it's one of those things. Like uh, there was so much wrong with the original Monster Hunter guide that, that it's funny. possible it was. Yeah. It's possible that it was just in an early build of the game and they took it out, but it made it into the guide, which is entirely possible. I mean, oh, I, I could see that, that being deemed like too violent. <laughs> yeah. Also, it. Yeah the, like, super piercing move? I don't know. He stuck his beak in the ground. So, one of these is really hurt, right? Yep. Yeah, oh, no, one of them's dead? Speaking of it. Oh, now it's gonna be easy. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But yeah, I, I mean, I'm really curious to know if it's actually true. I imagine it is not, but uh, I can definitely remember seeing videos of it when YouTube was first around. You know, if we were on, like, fluent in Japanese and used their Japanese video service, which I forget the name of, isn't it like... Nico Nico? Nico Nico, Nico. yeah. It would, if it were to be anywhere, we'd be able to find it on there. That's true. I wonder if I should go and do that. That would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> Don't you want to feel the head cut off with your own two hands, though? I mean, the heads do look as if they're meant to be cut off. I mean, they look like the sort of thing that looks like... Like, the artist was like, alright, make something that's going to pop off really easy. Well, it's also like... A, I can see it getting taken out for just for game purposes. Because if you can cut off the head and the tail, uh, you would get a bunch of extra carbs. It's worth it. But, I mean, you also miss out the fact that you can't capture the thing because you just cut its freaking head off. <laughs> oh, that too. It would also make sense of why in um, older games, or the creatures from older games often have brain stems that you can carve, like a Rathian's yeah. brain stem or a Gravios brain stem, whereas new creatures don't seem to have that. Yeah. Oh, look at you making sense. <laughs> it was purely by accident. I just talk and eventually oh, something comes out. Oh, like... <laughs> 
Gravios brain stems. Ooh. Does that mean that the uh, Narda Karuga's brain is in its butt? Well, yes. I think we've established that. How do you compare um, the original Rathos to the one in um, Portable Silver Rathos and Portable Third? He still doesn't fly. As, he doesn't fly away as much. Like it used to be, Rathalos and Rathian would touch the ground. You'd hit them for about maybe ten seconds, and then they'd run away. That sounds heinously annoying. It, I, it was really frustrating. So I mean, it was when you had Rathalos gear, you were top tier because you actually had the patience to. Yeah. Through. What were the armor skills for Rathalos in the very first uh, Monster Hunter? And uh, uh, in the first freedom game, I think it's attack up and rip speed. That's interesting. It took 25 points to get attack up large instead of 20 back in the day. Ooh. wonder why the extra 5. I guess because back then each point of damage was a lot. Wow. He's ready for capture now, too? I've been bowing him pretty hard. I'm going to take all the credit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, man. Oh. Look, we all know what uh, restaurant Ian Gruga likes. Oh, jeez. Red Lobster. <laughs> you mean you, you mean dummy? Uh, that's you what big dummy. Is. Save your trap, trap. It's a a bonus for playing on the uh, Japanese ad hoc servers. That's where I play when I try to get away from the world. I just need a little, <laughs> when I need a little me time, I go there. Speaking of, there's a question from Jordan. No, it's, it's not from Jordan. <laughs> You there, Shepard? Shepard, are you Is there? Shepard? Uh, I'm, I'm, right? I'm podcasting. I'm podcasting. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you got paralyzed by a Vespoid while you were sitting over shock trap like this? It'd be fitting. Okay. What's the uh, what's the question? It's from Cool Boy, and he asks, How come you're never in your city or your arena city? I look, but you're never there. I would love to hunt with you. Wow, it is a Jordan question. Why aren't you ever there? Uh, I didn't know I had an arena city. What? But why I, I, aren't you ever there? I can't be someplace that I don't know about. I mean, here, here's 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 a, here's a real answer. I mean, a lot of times there will be rooms and areas created by fans of the podcast to play with one another and that gets attributed to me even though I did not create them and then people go there expecting to see me and I'm not there and they get mad or I assume they get mad or disappointed or something and the fact is, is like maybe I'll show up if I hear about it like just this past weekend I was hunting with some Unity people is there Unity hunts uh, sometimes there are some hunts on the forums people want to hunt with me uh, sometimes they'll try and show up there or in the IRC channel a uh, lot of places you can try and find me but um it's all luck, you know. It's luck of the draw. Whoever, wh whenever I have free time, whenever I have time to go and, and kill monsters. Um, and actually, that's a good question to throw over to Maze, too. I mean, if people want to hunt with you, Maze, what's the best way to kind of track you down and turn you into their very own skin suit? <laughs> oh, God. Tro troll him. <laughs> um, I, I actually play on Ad Hoc Party quite often. Um, um, and I've got both of the, all the versions of Ad Hoc, so I'll just sort of... Um, I, I work full time, and I've got like a pretty busy IRL schedule, so like I jump on at pretty erratic times, um, and that doesn't particularly mesh well with um, the fact that I live in New Zealand, which is 17 hours ahead of the US. Um, but I mean, if, if I'm online, it'll generally be in World A of either the European or US um, ad hoc parties, um, and you know, I'll just if, so if you see me kicking around, um, then. By, by all means, just sort of jump in the room and say hi, and then leave immediately because he's yeah. not <laughs> No, I don't mind. Um, Tell him but, how he's a big faker. The real maze wouldn't have an underscore after his name. <laughs> yeah, I am the I am the maze with the underscore. Um, but like, if you join a room, please don't ask me like a million times if I'm the real Miserion. I, I I do get that from time to time. So I was like, Are you really Miserion? And I'm like, Yep, yeah, dude. And they're like. Are you sure? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not sure how else I can answer this question. <laughs> Prove it. Um, and also, before you ask, um, I don't usually upload my ad hoc party hunts to YouTube. Um, I don't tend to record them either. 
just before everyone asks you, that, that's another really common one. Do you get that in Shepherd? People saying, oh, I'm hunting with Shepherd, uh, so by actually get... he'll record it and put it on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, people automatically assume whenever they've hunted with me, it will not only be on the podcast, that it will become the podcast, and that that is not that is not true. I mean, it takes uh, approximately five to six minutes of editing time for every one minute of podcast footage that you see. Um, Where did you come up with that number? That's like that's my running average, um, but it's actually increasing now. So it's getting to be for every hour of footage you've seen, I probably spent about ten hours editing it. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, it, I could probably turn a random hunt into something that's somewhat enjoyable, but I, I'd rather just work on something that's been planned and, and we've been able to run through together. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's possible in the future that, um, for Operation Cherry Blossom, which actually we have not spoken of at all, um, that I will start, uh, awarding certain prizes that will result in me doing a hunt with you and, editing and uploading that hunt but yeah everyone support operation cherry blossom instead of complaining about why we don't get to why we don't get the japanese versions just chuck some stuff on twitter say nice things about catcom say awesome things about portable third and do what you can do we need fight good bears fight. we need bears in our monster hunters and some of us who have imported the game have been fighting bears for almost a year now uh, about eight months uh you know how how can you keep that treasure to yourself you know, you get that you get that little that little joy in your heart when you can hunt a bear and a wolf, and and you keep that yeah. all locked up inside. We got to work <clears> together <throat> to share that love. Oh, absolutely, I've... man. When when I'm hunting um, an Ashera and like especially the mini one, and I put my switch axe through its skull and I watch the light fade from its eyes, that just makes me feel warm inside, and that's a feeling that we <laughs> just can't, you know, deny from the people who um, can't you know read enough Japanese to play Portable Third. <laughs> I... <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I hear you can cut an air shearer's head off. Is that true, Nick? And Do you ever cut a mini air shearer's head off and just like hold it in your hands and like look at it straight into its dead, soulless eyes? And then I hang it on my rear view mirror until it decomposes enough where the smell bothers me and then I take it off and I got to try to find a new one but there aren't any people around I mean monsters huh. well I'm glad that didn't get weird yeah no oh, no that's that's cool guys that's cool I, I, I like that <laughs> okay so let's wrap this up <laughs> alright so um there are a number of channels you can get through to us. Uh, Formspring uh, is probably the best place to ask questions. Uh, YouTube is probably the best place to put funny comments if you want us to read them. Uh, MonsterHunterCast at GoogleMail.com is a place Wait, you can send use, email. Use there, read. there, and there, right? Uh, <laughs> grammatically correct on. on the Facebook group. Um, of course, you can head to SocialDistance.com and see bonus footage from Monster Hunter Podcast Late Night as well as a chat room and a web forum and special articles about Monster Hunter. Finally, of course, stay tuned to the end of this video for all the various ways you can help participate in Operation Cherry Blossom. Hey, so, how can I participate in Operation Cherry Blossom? Stay tuned so you can see my goofy-looking face tell you exactly how you can do that and what prizes are being given out and given away. Ha haven't you given us enough of your face? <laughs> how, have we I can never have enough. You need more. I mean, I, I, did you see the uh, Justin Bieber gift somebody created? Holy crap! What? Yeah, all right, no. Okay, 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 all right. Um, okay, 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 okay. I think it's just becoming wishful thinking at this point. All right, you're, I oh, wish right, I was Justin Bieber. You're getting it. You're getting it. Okay. Um, all right, so in any case, uh, this cool. is Shepard, the Monster Hunter Podcast, saying good luck, have a good hunt, and it's not the size of the hunter, it's the size of the hunter's hat. What? That that wasn't as good as Christians. Are we I'm talking about Jimmy hats? I can't. No, uh, monster hunting hats. Condoms. Look, I miss I Christian. Him. I miss him too. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, he's the fun. <laughs> Sturman. I got a big hat in this game too, guys. Look. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> man. Oh, I don't think I want to talk about your little shepherd anymore. Look, my little shepherd is enough for Big Joe, if you know what I mean. 
Whoa. Hey guys, it's Christian here. What, what's going on? What are you oh. guys talking about? Uh, 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 sticking my little it, shepherd in Big Joe's. Uh, what you, uh, what you been doing at Gamescom? You get any Big Big Joe's? You stick your... Why, why are we talking about that? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <that's a good laughs> <good idea. laughs> uh, I think Naxella started it. Hey everyone, this is Shepard from SocialDissonance.com. Welcome to week four of the Monster Hunter podcast, Monster Hunter Festa. Uh, this is going to be yet another week of more prize giveaways. Uh, first, a little bit of news. Um, as of today, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd HD has been released in Japan. And on my doorstep, today arrived not one, right, not two, not three, but four copies of Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Just to show it's not some sort of trick. Yeah. Yeah. Think about all that. It's a lot of Monster Hunter. Alright? Now, you want to know how we're going to get that in the West, right? Because not all of you can read Japanese, or not all of you want to read Japanese. Let me tell you how. Capcom has acknowledged this week that they actually are interested in localizing Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. However, there is a slight issue, and the issue is with the Sony Entertainment of America, Sony Entertainment of Europe, are both dragging their heels on implementing ad hoc support, and are also hesitant because neither of those games are going to be supporting trophies, which is apparently a new requirement of all PlayStation games. What are we going to do about that? Well, first, let's announce this week's winner. If you remember, the past week, the winner was going to receive a new dose alligator, as well of a prize of their choosing. And the winner for this week is... Space Manglaze from Twitter. Congratulations, Space Manglaze. You read, roses are red. Wait, <laughs> no. <laughs> roses are blank. Baggy are blue. If you don't feed Devil Joe, he'll surely eat you. At Monster Hunter. Hashtag MHP3. So, part of the reason why this is an important one, and I'm glad it was chosen randomly, is the new requirement for this week is not going to be a post on the Twitter for Monster Hunter. It's not going to be to register the Capcom Unity forums, and it is not going to be to join the Facebook page. Instead, this week, and possibly for the next coming weeks, we are going to repeatedly assault Sony on all fronts possible until they recognize that they need to get around to improving their ad hoc party. There are going to be two ways to do so. Uh, one way for sure. The other way, I might be able to figure out how to do it. I might not. But the absolute best way to do this is go to Twitter, at PlayStation, do the hashtag MHP3HD, and say, Hey Sony, fix Ad Hoc Party, I want to kill some bears, or I want to play Monster Hunter, or I want a Monster Hunter exclusive, take my money. Because Sony gets a little cut from every game that's sold as well, it's in their best interest to help develop games they are going to make them money as much as it is for Capcom to develop games to make themselves money. Okay, so hopefully some of this made sense. Um, I'm quite tired. I've worked very hard on the podcast as well. I've worked a lot of overtime this week. Uh, but anyways, good luck. Have a good hunt. And let's get Monster Hunter over here.